Hi everybody, it's Lori Wetzel here, and I am coming to you, probably not on a Tuesday, um, with some tech tips that have to do with your iPad, some little tips and tricks that may make navigating your iPad a little bit easier, ones you may or may not already know about. And we weren't able to get to all of these in the training because of the setup process, but now the setup is done, um, you may be ready to play around a little more. So the first thing I'm going to show you and remind you about is your buttons. So I'm going to go to an image here to show you what we've got going on. And as you know, right here is your home button. And if you're ever stuck and don't know how to get back, your home button is always going to get you where you need to go. Uh, along the side is your mute switch. You can always change that mute switch to become an orientation lock, and that can be something that we talk about um, in a more advanced tech tip. It is included within the settings. And, of course, your volume button down buttons are on the side, and it's not labeled, but the very top is your power or sleep button that will not quite turn it off, but at least put your iPad to sleep so that you're not wasting battery. Right now I happen to be in an app called Sketch, and again, this is maybe a little more advanced and I don't want to get into all of these details at the moment, um, but if I want to get back to my home screen right now, I could press that home button, but there also is another way to get back to the home screen, and that is to, and you can't see what my hands are doing, but if you put your entire hand on your iPad and use your four or five fingers to pinch, you see that it has closed up and gone back to my home screen. So that four or five finger pinch uh, will allow you to also return to the home screen rather than using the home button. You probably don't even realize it, but as you've been playing with your iPad, you have a lot of apps that are open. So if you double click your home button, you can see along my bottom screen all of these apps that are currently open. And obviously the more apps you have open, the more it is draining your battery. If you want these apps to close, if I, for instance, am no longer searching Pinterest for dinner ideas, I'm going to hold down on it and it's going to start to jiggle and then I just tap the minus sign and it forces that app to close. So you may every once in a while want to take a look at all of your apps that are open and decide if you really need them. I, for instance, do not need iMovie. Again, I'm just going to hold down on it until it jiggles and press that red minus sign and that is going to close that particular app. Now in addition to being able to see what apps are running, if you continue scrolling all the way um, to the right hand side, you get to this area that you'll see on the bottom. And this is an area, pardon me, where you can lock the screen's orientation so that it's locked in portrait so that if you're showing something to the students, it's not constantly moving around on you um, if you happen to move the iPad. You've got brightness controls here. You've got volume controls here that do the same thing as the button on the side. And you've also got the ability to access your music from here. So that's just kind of a shortcut. Um, to get to some of those controls and the screen orientation I feel is a pretty important one if you're up there in front of the students. I'm just going to go back to my home screen and as I showed you we've got a lot of apps that are running and if I for instance was running Sketch but now I want to get to my iPad secrets to look something up what you'll probably do right now is click on the home screen, double click on your open apps area, scroll over, find your iPad secrets. That's just one way of getting from app to app. Another way to get from app to app is to use a four finger swipe and it will automatically swipe between the apps that are running. So if I right now, and again, you can't see what my hands are doing on my screen, but if I do a four finger swipe right now, it will show you that I have a bunch of different apps running and this four finger swipe is actually switching between them. So if you don't want to hit the home button in between, you don't have to do that. The four finger swipe will also accomplish exactly the same task. I'm going to go back to my home screen. So what if you have 
downloaded an app that you thought would be helpful, you've tried it out, and then you decide it's really not going to help you very much. It's very easy to delete an app that you have downloaded. All you need to do is, um, again, click and hold on it. So this is one that I was just messing around with yesterday. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to hold my finger over it. And notice it's now jiggling. All I have to delete it, to do to delete it, is hit the little X in the upper left corner. Maybe. I guess we'll try a different one. It says it's deleting Pyramid. It will also de delete all of its data. And I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. And that app is gone. I'm not quite sure why it took so long to respond. Normally it doesn't do that. So that's all there is to it if you've installed an app and you decide that it's not one that you want anymore. I'm going to go into Safari for a moment and let's just go to a website. We'll do this one. Um, let's go to Irma's Frozen Custard and see what the flavor of the week is. If you're viewing a website and you've scrolled all the way down on the website, for instance, and you wanted to get back up to the top, let's try this again. Here we go. So I've scrolled all the way down and I've seen the history of Irma's Frozen Custard. All I need to do to get back to the top of the screen is click on the very top menu bar and it didn't appropriately show you that, and the reason is because I'm doing the display recording. But if you tap the title bar, which I can't see because of my display recording right now, it will take you right back to the top of the website or to the top of the screen that you happen to be working on. This next tip is a really nice one. It's how to do screenshots. So if you come across something that you want to be able to show your kids, maybe put it into your web page or put it into a how-to document or whatever the case may be, if you hold down the power button and the home button, and again, you can't see my hands, but you know where those buttons are, hold it down for about half a second, and you saw the screen just kind of flash. What it just did is it just took a picture. So if I go back to my home page and I locate where my photos are, you will now notice that I now have a screenshot of that screen. And that screenshot could now be emailed or used as my wallpaper or tweeted or whatever the case may be. You have lots of different options. So that screenshot tool may prove to be something that is pretty useful. Now that same key sequence that I just talked about, the home button and the top or power sleep button, is also helpful if your iPad freezes. So if for some reason the iPad is misbehaving and not doing what you need it to do, if you hold down that home button and that tap power button um, for a few seconds, um, it will actually reboot the entire iPad and let you start from scratch. And just a few more things to wrap it up. You have the ability, obviously, to customize all of your apps on your screens. And mine obviously looks pretty different than yours probably does right now. So if I want to rearrange icons, it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is hold down until they start jiggling, and then you just kind of move them around in whatever way you want to move them around. Once you've moved them the way you need to, hit your home button, and it will stop them from jiggling. I also want to show you how you can organize things into folders. On my home screen, I've got all my educational apps that are kind of organized. So I have a math folder and a social studies folder and my everyday math apps and language arts and screen capturing and so on and so forth. So as you begin to download a bunch of apps, you may decide that you want to start organizing them. All you have to do to organize them, and I'm going to show you two examples on this page, I'm going to take iMovie and I'm going to hold down over it and make the icon start to jiggle. And iMovie is a paid app that um, I actually purchased. I'm not positive what the district's plan is for iMovie on iPads. Stay tuned for that decision. But 
Both iMovie and VoiceThread are apps that could be used for digital storytelling, so maybe I want to group those together. All I have to do is drag iMovie right over the top of VoiceThread, and I don't want it to be called photography. I want it to be called digital storytelling. And now I have a folder on my desktop called Digital Storytelling and any other apps that I get that might fall into that category I can easily drag in and I can go ahead and press the home button and stop them from jiggling. If I, for instance, want my, this FP, my FPS icon, I want it on a different page, all you have to do is drag it down to your bottom menu bar. You're allowed to have up to six icons on the bottom menu bar. And I'm going to drag my screen over. I want it on this page instead. I again hold down, make that icon jiggle, and now drag it onto that page. So you can customize and organize your apps into folders as much as you would like. So you may want to consider doing that, especially as you start to work with a bunch of apps with the students. A couple of more um, tips and tricks. This the iPad has the ability to copy and paste just like you can on a computer. I'm going to put my finger over this until I see this little like magnifying glass show up. And I can actually drag this and I can say this is the part I want to copy. And now for instance, I could go into a different app. Um, I'm going to go into Pages, and again, this is a paid app, one that is, does not happen to be on your iPads at the moment. And again, stay tuned for what the district's plan is for installing additional apps. But if I want to paste this into my Word, I pardon me, my Pages document, I just hold my finger over there again. There we go. And I hit paste. And that is the text from the website that is now on my pages document. And this copy paste works with text. And a lot of times, if you hold your finger over an image, it will actually allow you to place it right into your photos, which is a nice feature. And then last but not least, you see that I have a lot of apps on here, and sometimes I have no idea where they are. So what you can do is I'm going to scroll, I'm going to swipe over to my right. This is actually my home page, but I'm going to swipe over one more time so I can say search iPad. So if I, for instance, don't know where my Pinterest icon is and I'm just not finding it, I can type Pinterest into this search function and it takes me right to Pinterest and I don't need to be searching for it. Again, keeping it organized and knowing where things are would definitely be more recommended, but it's just one more nice way to find things, especially if you're in front of the students and want to find things quickly. That was just a few little tips and tricks to get you started with the iPad. I hope you find them helpful, and I'm sure there will be more coming as the school year progresses. Have a great rest of your summer.